ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದಂ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ವಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೌ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇಧಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ನಮಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಗುರುಪಾದಾಂಬುಜನ್ಮನೆ ಸವಿಲಾಸ ಮಹಾಮೋಹ ಗ್ರಾಹಗ್ರಾಸೈಕಕರ್ಮಣೆ ವರ್ಸ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಪೃಥಗಣನಾ ಕ್ವಚಿದ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಂತು ನಂಗಾಸ್ತಿ ದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಶಂಕೆ ಕಥಂ ನ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವೃತ್ತಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಕಿಂತೇಕದೇಶ ಘಟಶಕ್ತಿರ್ಯೂಮ ಸ್ನಿಗ್ಧ ಮೃದ್ಯೋ ವರ್ತದೆ ಪಾಲೋಸ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಾಭೂತ ಕೃಪಾದಸ್ತು ಸ್ವಯಂ ಪ್ರಭ ೇಶವೃತ್ತಿ ಮಾಯಾವತಿ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸರ್ವಥಾ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ನ ಪೃಥಕ್ ಗಣನಾ ಕ್ವಚಿತ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾವರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋರ್ ಕೌಂಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಟು ದ ಒನ್ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾವರ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಮಾಯಾ ಬಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿ ಪಾವರ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕೌಂಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ And therefore, the presence of Maya does not in any way present a duality with reference to Brahman, meaning that the non-duality of Brahman is, is retained or stems in spite of Maya being there, because Maya is of a different degree of reality. It's as simple as that. Maya does not enjoy the same degree of reality as Brahman. It enjoys what we call a Vyavaharik Sattva. Brahman is Paramatik Sattva. just as my shadow enjoys the reality of a different nature with reference to my body or the reflection enjoys the reality which is different of a different nature from the reality of my body and therefore you can count two equal things you can count all of these if they belong to the same class but these two do not belong to the same class one is absolute reality other one is a projected reality and so snake does not is not to be counted as something other than the rope. <coughs> well, if Maya occurs, does not become a second thing, then maybe Maya Karyam, meaning the world which is created from Maya, suddenly cannot present a duality to Brahman. So, Dvitiyam Shankara Katham is a question of the world in spite of this duality, the non-duality is in spite of the apparent duality, because duality is apparent. and where the parent does not become or does not count it as something different from what is real. So a parent doesn't form a duality with reference to that which is real. 
that was taken care of. Now, where is this Maya located? The typical way of the Niyayika's way of thinking. We don't think like this. But anyway, this is how everyone to find the place. Where is Maya located? Is Maya located all throughout Brahman or is it only in one desha, one aspect, or one place of Brahman? Says, well, you cannot say Maya is throughout Brahman because then Brahman can never be free from Maya. If you say that wherever Brahman is, there Maya is, then you can never realize or you can never know Brahman free from Maya. In which case, a person can never be free from samsara. But the fact that the wise men know the self of Brahman, which is devoid of any vikarva or any duality, shows that Brahman without Maya is. Where Maya is, Brahman must be. But where Brahman is, Maya is not. Where the part is, the clay must be. Where the clay is, the part doesn't have to be. That's the idea. But then where is this part? It's in one part of clay. <coughs> not throughout clay. If the part is throughout clay, then wherever the clay is, part has to be. But somewhere the part is. So where is it? Snigdha Muddhya Vartate. That's the answer. That part is not throughout the clay, but Snigdha Muddhya. Part is there only in what we call wet clay and not in clay throughout, you see. Meaning that only when clay assumes a certain kind of a modification, then alone the part can be created from that. So you can say, it's the part, it's in the flower I like, but not throughout flower, because you can't make cake and things like that. So the part is in a flower with a certain kind of mixture of water and whatever, and cake also is in flower, I guess, you know, in some other way. And so here it is, I know. So all of them are in one aspect of flower, but not throughout. And Shashatya he etanesha vrittitve pramanamaha ni salus varsasle paresha sarva bhutani triparasthi svantrabaha iti etanesha vrittitve mayaya mayayaha vadati shruti he Shruti says that maya is in etanesha maya remains for abides in one aspect of Brahman or in one amsha of Brahman by saying Brahman as though consists of four quarters in which Maya, the creation is in one quarter, Tupalasti Swayam Pravaha, whereas three quarters of Brahman are Swayam Pravaha, remaining abiding in their own glory, unaffected by this one quarter or unaffected by Maya. So somehow in order to convey this idea that Brahman retains his independence of Maya, Maya is totally dependent upon Brahman, Whereas Brahman retains this independent of Maya, this idea needs to be conveyed somehow. And that is why this Pada, that there is one quarter of Brahman constantly undergoes these changes of creation, sustenance, dissolution, while the three quarters of Brahman always remain unchanged in its own glory. Not to imagine as three quarters, a large dimension remains unaffected, a small insignificant dimension undergoes changes. <coughs> Na kevalam shruti hera, smruti hati astiti aha. Not only this idea conveyed that maya or the creation is only in one aspect. As I say, where is this creation? Lord Krishna is there, no? Lord Krishna is uttariyam, this is called. Uttariyam means anupavastra. Where is this creation? Creation is in some little corner of the uttariyam of Lord Krishna. So if Lord Krishna represents Brahman, then where is the place of creation? Not throughout Krishna, in his Uttariya, one little corner of it. If you compare Brahman with ocean, then where is Maya? In one little bubble, you know, that's where it is. So that dimension of Brahman remains, you know, in its own right. And only one little insignificant Amsha of Brahman as though undergoes change. Even that Amsha of Bhava is not there, but explain that what is beyond this creation is much vaster then what we perceive, and that is the idea that is conveyed. And verse 56 also conveys that kind of an idea, Smrutihi. First he quotes Shruti, meaning Purusha Sutta, Chandogya Upanishad, etc. Now Bhagavad Gita is being quoted in the verse 56. Vishtadhyā hamidam krachnam 
एकां शेनस्थितो जगत कृष्ण अर्जुन वाह जगतस्तेकृष्ण कृष्ण एकां सेन स्थित जगत अथवा बहुमतेन किं ज्ञात तवाजुन भगवदीता लॉर्ड कृष्ण डिस्क्राइब And does it mean that Lord Krishna is exhausted in self? No way. Eshatit desh dhastra upaha vibhuta vistare maya. All I have described to Arjuna is nothing but only one little aspect or one, one fraction of all my vibhuti. Now how long do I have to know? How many vibhutis should I know when I come to know the Lord? Hey Arjuna, you will never come to know me today if you merely focus your attention on the vibhuti. Because Vibhuti means the manifest creation. The whole manifest creation is Vibhuti or glory of the Lord. That's a very beautiful concept. So we don't look upon creation of the world as something that creates trouble to me. Or something that creates all the resources of all this conflict. It may be, so I do not know how to relate with it. But we look upon the world as what? The glory of the Lord. Manifest glory of the Lord. Of the unmanifest. Maya Tatamidam Saram Jagat Avyakta Murchina So by my avyakta murti is one manifest form, the whole creation is pervaded. So what is creation? It is my manifest form. I remain in my unmanifest form unchanged. So one fraction of the Lord, in one fraction of Brahman, the whole creation is located, you might say. The idea is given, Vishtabhya ahamidam krishnam ekam shenas thito jagat. अहम इदम कृष्ण जगत एकांशेन विष्टभ्य स्थित है इदम कृष्ण जगत दिस एंथायर क्रिएशन ग्रॉस सरी कॉज ऑफ दिस एंथायर क्रिएशन विष्ट एकांशेन विष्टभ्य सो होल्डिंग और परवेडिंग विद इन ए फ्रैक्शन ऑफ मी सो आई आई सस्टेन और होल्ड द होल क्रिएशन बाय वन फ्रैक्शन ऑफ मी सो अर्जुन वॉट यू परसीव इज नॉट आउट मी but just a fraction of me. And therefore the knowledge of the law is not complete merely if you know, the, even if you come up with the truth of this whole creation. Then also you will not have known the total dimension. Because you will come to know the truth of what we call the manifest creation. Then you will come to know what we call the sometimeonial matter, if you come to know. But that represents what? One fraction only. So, thus also Bhagavad Gita also conveys the idea But Maya, the whole creation, abides in just one fraction of Lord Krishna, who there stands for Param Brahma. In Krishna, that Krishna doesn't stand for a person, stands Aham when Lord Krishna says there, Vishtabhya Aham Idam Krishna, that Aham or I of Lord Krishna is what? Is Param Brahma or Sat. And from that standpoint, the Lord says that I who is Sat or Brahma, in me, just a fraction of me. In my one fraction, I sustain the whole creation. It is Krishna, Arjuna, Aha. And when Lord Krishna teaches Arjuna, we have to take it seriously. It depends on who is talking to him. That's important. So, so who is talking? None other than Lord Krishna is talking. So we have to pay attention there. And who is he telling this to? To his very dear disciple, friend as well as disciple. Bhakto Sine Sakha Sedi. You are my deity as well as my friend. So it's very important that when you are saying something to someone you love, you will never tell something that is wrong or you will never discard that person. You will always say something which is for the benefit, which is, you know, therefore, Lord Krishna is giving his upadesha to Arjuna. It is given out of love and therefore, it is something very serious, something well meant for the well-being of Arjuna. And therefore we take seriously as pranam, as well it means whatever is the vachanam or whatever is the statement of Lord Krishna. Vidhi Krishna Arjuna Aha. This is what Lord Krishna said to Arjuna. Jagat Ahatu Ekale Siddham. The Jagat or creation enjoys only one fraction. So it is located only in one fraction of the Lord. It forms one fraction of the total reality. He is what is. So where is this manifest reality? But that is not the total reality. 
what is manifest to only a fraction of the total reality. <coughs> okay, you are to me about the manifest creation, how about Brahman, which is the world of Maya? Vidanin Nirmaya Swarupa Sadhare Pramanamaha. Now, in the second verse, is Pramanam again say we are the means of knowledge or a statement which teaches of its rule is Nirmaya Swarupam. The Swarupa or the nature of love, it is Nirmayam, devoid of Maya, which is unaffected by Maya. So, uh, Sri Mahimni Tishthati. Kasmin Pratishthadam by Naramunya Sanat Kumara. Where is Brahman located? Sri Mahimni Tishthati. It abides in its own glory, meaning that it sustains itself. And where Maya has no entry. So Nirmaya Swarupa Sadhare, that this Nirmaya Swarupam, that nature of Brahman, Swarupa of Brahman, which is Nirmaya, devoid of any influence or relation with Maya, that such a thing is Pramana for that this Vakya is stated here in the verse 57. <coughs> Sabhumi Vishwata Vritva Sabhumi Vishwata Vritva Vikara Varti Chatrasti Shruti Sutra Krita Vachaha Sadhuvim Vishwada Vritva Atyadishtha Dasangulam This we know very well Sahasra Sira Shapurushaha Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Pad Sadhuvim Vishwada Vritva Atyadishtha Dasangulam This in very first mantra the whole thing is stated When it says that Sahasra Sira Shapurushaha This Purusha Paramatma is thousand means countless heads Sahasra Aksha is countless eyes Sahasra Pad countless legs Meaning that he is where all the heads are, where all the eyes are, where all the head and the, and the, and the, and all the legs are. He is everywhere. Sabhumi Vishwata Vritva Vishwata. He is Bhumi, that means Prithvi or the whole cosmos. He pervades the entire cosmos Vishwata from all sides. And Atyatishthat Dasangulam. Dasangulam Atyatishthat. And again he abides ten inches above this creation. Sabhumim Vishwata Vritva Hi Atyatishthat Tashangulam He loves the past tense. Atyatishthat He stood, means he stands, he remains ten inches above the creation. Meaning unaffected by creation. That is the transcendental Swarubha of the Lord. What is manifest is the imminent aspect of the Lord. And what is unmanifest is the transcendental nature of the Lord. So what is manifest is what we call Svabhava and what is unmanifest is what we call Svarupa. <coughs> you can say to the rope, again to a familiar example, the rope pervades the snake. In every way, Vishwata Vutva pervades in every way. Where the snake is, that's where the rope is. When the snake is, then the rope is. How long the snake is, so long the rope is and so on and so forth. That's uh, the nose of the snake, does it have a nose and the eyes of the snake? Let us say, are also the rope. The length of the snake also is rope. That's saying that the actor completely pervades the, the dagger. The nose of the dagger is the nose of the actor. The hand of the dagger is the hand of the actor. Sabhumim Vishwata Vrutva, how the actor completely pervades the dagger. Atta Vishtad Dasangalam, but he remains in his own reality. So, actor returns his own reality, that he is a rich man. While simultaneously pervading the beggar. This is how it is. So, what is manifest is a beggar. You can say, where is this beggar? He is in one fraction of the actor. You might say. In fact, the superimposition upon the actor, alright? But still, without the actor, the beggar cannot be. And therefore, we have to trace the existence of beggar only in the actor. At the same time, we want to say that the actor returns his freedom. To be not a beggar also. If the actor could not be other than beggar, then we say the beggar is throughout the actor. Of course, he is not an actor. 
but here the actor retains his freedom to be anything other than that. He can walk out, he can change, he can become he can become a king also. That shows that the beggar is in one fraction of the actor. Sabhumin Vishwata Vitwa but the actor pervades the beggar completely. The eyes of the beggar are the eyes of the actor, nose of the beggar is the nose of the actor. Atyatishtat Dasangulam Not that we have to separate. So this is the reality. We don't have any distance that here is born creation and ten inches above is Brahman. It's not that way. So transcendental cannot be that again and totally depends upon transcendent. Maya totally depends upon Brahman. The Daga totally depends upon actor. It's not that the actor stands physically apart. In reality, the separation is in terms of reality and not in terms of space or time. In terms of reality, actor enjoys altogether a different degree of reality, whereas beggar enjoys a different degree of reality. Beggar is what we call Svabhava of the actor. Yet will, he assumes that, at will, he, he says it off. But he cannot give, what he cannot give is his Svarupa. And so what he cannot get rid of is, whatever he is, he is a rich man or he is a whatever it is, he cannot get rid of, that is Svarupa. What he can assume at will and get rid of is called Svabhava. And so that beggar, how it pervades, the actor, how it pervades the beggar, and still remains ten inches apart from that, unaffected by the beggar. Even while the fellow is acting as a beggar, is still unaffected by him totally. Even when Brahman appears as a creation, it remains unaffected by it. Doesn't that contaminate or pollute it in any way? That's the idea that is conveyed here. Vikara Varticha Atrasti Shruti Sutra Krutoho Vachaha. So, what is stated in the first line of verse is Shruti Shrutehe Vachaha. That's the words of Shruti. What is stated in the second line of verse is Sutra Krutaha Sutra Kar. Meaning Bhagavana, this is what he also says. Vikara Varticha Atrasti. So, what Sutra Kar or Bhagavana says in Brahma Sutra also becomes a pranam for all these texts. Because texts such as Panchala say, they seek to explain the Sriti, Sriti, as well as the uh, Brahma Sutra, which form what we call the Prasthanatrai. <coughs> That's why you find here references from Upanishads, you find references from Bhagavad Gita, you find references from Brahma Sutra also, because they seek to explain the Prasthanatrai. So he quotes here a sutra, Vikara Vartija, as the Tikagara says, Vikara Vartija, Tathari Sthitimaha, Brahma Sutra, it is Sutra Kara Vacham Vityarsaha. So Vikara Vartija, and also Vikara Varti. What is Vikara Varti? So Vikara Varti, meaning Nirvikaram, Vikara Avarti, meaning Vikara Avartamanam. So, vrut, vrut means to be. Vikara avarti means what? Vikara avartamanam. That's the meaning of Vikara avarti. Vikara avarti. Vikara artam, avartamanam. That does not remain in Vikara or modification. Meaning what? Nirvikaram, Nirmayakam, Paramasikam, Parameshwaram. Vikara avarti means Nirvikaram. Vikara modification always belongs in the realm of Maya, therefore it is Nirmayakam. So this sutra says that not only that Vikari or Mayaka Rupa is there, but Nirvikara or Nirmayakam Rupa of Brahma also is. <coughs> it is Paramarthakam. Why Paramarthakam? Because it cannot be negated. Paramarthakam, Parameshwaram. That's a real Parameshwara because without any effort, he rules the Maya completely, so Rupa must be Vikara Avarti cha Asti. So Vikara Avarti and Vikara Avarti. Understand? Vikara Avarti, Vikara Avarti. When you add a Kara, Vikara Avarti, when you say is what? Vikari. Vikara Avarti means what? So Nirvikari. Vikara Avarti means Vikari Avartamanam. Vikara Avarti means Vikari Avartamanam. Vikara avartamins, vikara avartamanam. 
this Brahman is these two forms. That's what the Sutra says. Vikare katha upasanartam vikare vartirubhavi vedaha amna hai. But Vedas also talk about vikare varti or vikare vartamanam brahman hai rupam. That rupam, other aspect of brahman, which obtains in vikara, which is in the form of vikara or modification. And therefore this whole creation, which is subject to change and modification, also is brahman hai rupam. But it also nothing, nothing but rupa or yasma, a manifestation of brahman. So both are there. This Chakara shows earlier discussion focused on Vikara Varti, meaning Vikara Vartamanam. And what for these forms are given to us? How do we, how can the Vedas also give the forms? Like Rama, Krishna, or the Vedas give some other forms, like Indra, Varuna, etc. Or these Upasanas are given the Vedas for what purpose? Upasanasam, so that we can meditate. Meditation always is possible upon something that is within the realm of vikara. One cannot meditate on something which is beyond vikara because the mind cannot comprehend. Mind can only comprehend something which has some meaning, form, modification, function. So in order that the mind can comprehend, mind can meditate, mind can worship, the scriptures also give us these forms of Brahman with modification. <coughs> So, Tatha Upasanartham, that is Sheikh Upasana, meditation, Vikara Varti Rivanadi, Vedaha Amnaya. Veda also have told us the Vikara Varti, Vikara Vartamanam Rupam means Vikara Rupam. And so we have now both statements in the Vedas. Eta Vanascha Mahima, Ate Jaya Vimsha Purusha, isn't it? Purusha Eveda Vimsha Ram, Yad Bhutam Yatcha Bhavyam. So far is described that this so Sopadikam Brahma. Purusha Evedavim Sarvam Yad Bhutam Yatcha Bhavim Yad Bhutam Yatcha Bhavim Sarvam Eva Purushaha Purushaha Eva Iram Sarvam Yad Bhutam Yatcha Bhavim Whatever is past, whatever is going in the future and therefore whatever is in the present is Purushaha Paramatma alone. And he also Uta Amrutattva Seshana. He also abides Amrutattva Seshana. Uta and again Amrutattva Seshana. Seshana is the Lord of Immortality, Lord of the Devata also. He also the Lord of all the cosmic forces, meaning that he is the Nyamaka, the control of the whole creation also. Vedamme Nati Rohadi, Ati Rohadi. He himself comes down in the form of Annam or the form of this objective world. Eta Vanasya Mahima, all of this is what Sopadikam is the Mahima of that Purusha of Paramatma. So Eta Vanasya Mahima, when the Upanishad says, or when the Purusuttam says, that is Sopadika Mahima. That he alone is what is in the present, past, present and future. He alone is what rules the whole creation. He alone is the one which comes down or appears in the form of this creation. That is Him alone. That is also Mahima the glory that is Sopajika Mahima. Meaning the glory is Upani. Glory within the realm of change and modification. Atojjaya Gansa Purusha Ataha Then other than this Beyond the Jaya Gansa Purusha Jaya means Sreshta This Purusha the Paramatma is Ataha Jaya Even greater than this. So greater than this Vikari is what? That is a Murupadika. Atojjaya Gumsa Purushaha. Padosya Vishwabhudani. Tripadasya Murtandhi. That one Pada is a Supadika Murupam. And Tripadas the Murupadika Murupam. And the Tathari Durupam. So it says Tathari Sthitimaha. Tathari was to be Durupam. Durupam Sthitimaha Vedaha. The Veda of the scriptures talk about this Durupam Sthiti. This two fold. Brahman. One is the manifest Brahman, other is the unmanifest Brahman. One is immanent Brahman, other is transcendent Brahman. And both is immanent is for what? For the purpose of worship, for the purpose of meditation. Transcendent is that which is to be known as a very self. Thus, we find both Brahman 
in the Vedas for most being Nirupadikam as well as Sopadikam. Nirupadikam is Parnathikam, is ultimate reality, absolute reality which cannot be negated. Sopadikam is only Vyavaharikam, it is relative. But since we experience the relative reality, that also has to be explained. If you don't explain it, then you don't know how to live in this. So they explain that what is manifest, what is experienced all the time also is Brahman, Brahman Sopadukam Rupam. And that becomes a gate for you to ultimately know the Nurupadukam. So how the Vedas employ this? When you experience a very transaction of the creation, and that, is, that becomes a very means for gaining the knowledge of that which is Adishthanam or substratum of this Sopadukam Rupam. That's how we have the whole Karma Yoga, the whole worship in Bhagavad Gita. That what appears in front of us also is the Lord alone in manifest form. And so the world is a place of worship, not a place of enjoyment, or not a place of indulgence of pleasure. It's a place of worship. So they do not relate to the creation as something which should be exploited, which should be mastered or controlled. Creation is something which is to be worshipped because it is manifestation of Lord. And when you gain the fear of this, the manifest, then that opens a gate for the knowledge of the unmanifest. <coughs> this are Kathopanishad everywhere, the same aspect is described, that uh, first of all, that sad dasti brahmi dave chela, first of all one is to know that asti brahma. That is one is to know that whatever is is brahman. And that becomes the gate for us to gain the knowledge of that, which is beyond manifestation or beyond the the mind and the inter and the mind and the speech. <coughs> All right. So we have established, the author established here that we have this reference from the Shruti, from the Upanishad and from the Vedas, that there is a Nirmayakam Rupa Brahman as well as Mayakam, a Nirupadikam as well as Sopadikam of Rupa Brahman. <coughs> When pressing for this is Tarhi, Naram Satya Vrodhai Dhyasya Kaspariharah. But you say that Brahman is Naram Sham, without fractions, without parts, it is partless, Niravayavam. And how do you say that Maya or creation is in one fraction of Brahman, as though Brahman is fractions or what? Has Brahman really four quarters or is one quarter is undergoing change and the three quarters not undergoing change? Is this kind of parts are there? That is just contradictory. Tarhi Naram Satya Virodha To say that Maya or creation is in one fraction of Brahman Fractionalizes Brahman Compartmentalizes Brahman And that is opposed to Brahman which is Nirupadikam Nirumayat I mean which is Aniravayam Asya Kaf Pariharha This Virodha How do you resolve this contradiction? How do you resolve the contradiction? That Brahman is partless And still you are saying that Maya is in one fraction of Brahman how do you resolve this contradiction? Iti āsaṅkya vāstava niram sattva abhivagamāt nu varodaha He says vāstava niram sattva abhivagamāt As far as vāstava or the real nature of Brahman is concerned, what do you accept? Un niram sam or niravayavam So in reality, as ultimate reality, we only accept Brahman that is partless Brahman that is Nirmayakam, Paramatikam, Nirupadikam. And that's what we accept. Navarodaham, therefore, however, then how do you explain the Supadikam or Vikara Vartirukam? It's something that is superimposed upon Brahman. Because when you perceive a snake, you cannot simply say snake is not. Because that is not going to really, uh, we understand by this person. So you have to explain the creation of snake also and then show that the snake is mithya. And thus we explain the creation also to show that it is mithya. When mithya is there, sat sat adhisthana must be there. And so we do not say that this amsa is also kalpana. And that's what is being said, Nagarola hai gavi prayana, udahurta shruti abhi prayana hai. The shruti which have been quoted, the Yoga Mantra which have been quoted, that is abhi prayana. Either when the Vedas says that Brahman's three quarters remain above and one quarter undergoes change, who is the Shruti in 
Is it trying to say that Brahman really has this parts? No. Even though he seems to be talking in language of duality, Shruti in fact doesn't intend that. And that's what I said in verse 58. <coughs> Niram Shetyam Shamarupya Krishnam Shaveti Prachataha Tadbhasa Uttaram Bhuta Shrutishra Prahitaishini Niram Shavi Amsha Maharopya. The so called idea of fraction or Amsha is what? Aropya. So Sudhi only does Aropa. For the sake of what? The listener. Krutsne Amshavayadi Prakshataha. The student is asking this question. When you talk of Maya, when you talk of creation, and when you say that the creation has its being in Brahman, Aitadatmudam sarvam saatma, you know, so he said, tat satyam saatma tattvamasi, when Svetajad is giving his teaching, Aitadatmudam sarvam, that sat or brahman is the atma of the whole creation. Sat or brahman is adhishthana of the whole creation. So question is, where does the creation rest? So when the question is asked by the student, he says, krutsne amshayavi prachadaha, a student is asking this question, does the creation of Maya Krutsne, does it remain throughout Brahman, Amsheva, or does it remain in a fraction of Brahman? This is a question that is asked. Now, who will to give a reply which will be able to make the student see something? And therefore, this statement of the Upanishads are always to be taken in a proper context. So, is it Prachataha? So when a student is asking this question, whether the creation of Maya is throughout Brahman or even part of Brahman, that means that the student already has this concept of part. He already has in his mind the concept of fraction or Amsha. Therefore he is asking, is the Maya in Amsha of Brahman or throughout Brahman? So keeping that in mind, that Bhāshaya Uttaram Bhūte, in his own language, all the language that he can understand, Shruti Brute, Shruti answers him. The way of answering Shruti Hitaishini. Why does he say that your question is stupid? How can there be parts in that which is powerless? You can dispute the person. But that doesn't answer his question, nor does he get his, his question get resolved. And therefore, you can always take the Dharmatic standpoint and dismiss every question in the world. But that doesn't really resolve the person. Swami, I am sad. Who is sad? No, you can ask this question. What do you mean, who is sad? You are sad. Who is sad? I am sad. How do you say you are sad? And my mind is sad. Your mind is sad. You are not sad. Okay. Perhaps that may work also. It may be necessary sometimes. But all the time you say that, who is talking? You first know. First tell me who is talking. You know, then, what are the problems here at the level of the mind? They don't get resolved. So that also has to be addressed. After all, if you really are, if you want him to know something, if you want, if you really care for him, then you cannot dismiss a person, you have to take into account the person as the person is, and then make him say what you want him to say. So first of all, you should relate to the person in a manner that the person is, and then slowly make him say what you want him to say. And therefore the Shruti also relates to the student. When the student asks this question, whether Maya is an infraction of Brahman or throw of Brahman, then the teacher sees that, huh, this fellow already has concluded that there is something, some fractional idea is already in his mind. We will be telling that there is no fraction at all. But when you say there is no fraction, that will mean that there is no world also. And that he cannot tell it right now. It is not able to find him to stomach that idea that there is no creation because he thinks that there is world. And he experiences it. And therefore, you have to explain the reality of the world. For that it is said that the whole world is only in the fraction of Brahman. Ultimately to say that this whole idea of fraction itself is superimposed by showing that world doesn't have a reality of its own. It takes a whole process. 
it may take a whole Upanishad to answer that question. But that the teacher has to do, then the student sees. All of this is said, as if this teacher also will do. He will explain how Akash, Rai, all these five elements came, and how they came from where? Brahman from Brahman really they cannot come, so they cannot be modification of Brahman. And so they are something very superimposed upon Brahman. Why superimposed doesn't enjoy a reality of its own. And therefore, the idea of the fraction and the total also is of the same nature. So that fractional aspect is also superimposed. Just as the creation is superimposed, that fraction of Brahman, that fractional aspect also is superimposed upon. Tad bhasa uttaram rute shruti shrutruhi taishni And therefore it is very necessary when we interpret this statement with shruti that the shrota or the listener always must be kept in mind while interpreting the statement of the Upanishad. If you take a statement out of context and then try to understand it, perhaps the statement will not make sense or it may convey even just the opposite of what the Shruti wants to ultimately convey. But we must know that a given statement is a part of the whole scheme of teaching. Upanishad is a teaching system, is a teaching tradition, not merely a tradition of revealing truth. Upanishad doesn't merely reveal truth, it wants to see that the Shruti or the student sees the truth. That's the reason why in Shandhavya Upanishad the same open, open, I mean, Upanishad is repeated nine times. Tattva Nasi Shveda Keta, Tattva Nasi Shveda nine times. Bhura Bhagavan Vidnyapayati, he keeps on asking. So the Vidya is telling me, please explain me again. Please explain me again, because still something is not clear, still something is not clear. Again and again he asks, eight times he asks. When he is first told that you are that Sattva, Sat or Brahman says, still something is not clear. So Rivya sir, please explain it to me. And the illustration is given. Then some other question arises in his mind. Please explain to me again. And the illustration. Yet another question arises. And like that, the teacher keeps on explaining until the student is completely satisfied. And he sees what the teacher sees. So under the Upanishad is not merely to declare the truth, but to make the student see it. And so in his statement of Upanishad also, how to be interpreted or understood in that light. So he says, Shruti vi Shrotru Hitaishani. The Hita or the well-being of the Shrotru, well-being of the listener, the student, he is in mind with Shruti. And when the Shruti says, the student is asking questions from a certain standpoint, in his mind, the well is real. And therefore he wants to know where this well abides. So teacher sees that the student is giving reality to the world. And therefore, casually or to begin with it is said that the world only abides in one fraction of Brahman. Thereby, conveying that Brahman enjoys a reality much greater than that of the creation. And then the student is ready to listen to you. And then you explain to him how the creation came about and then show how the creation is not real. And now, even to say that in one fraction, that fraction also is not real, that is also a kalpana. <coughs> and therefore, never over the hair. Whereas kalpitam never opposes, I mean, it never, never, never contradicts what is real. So snake, kalpana of the snake, never contradicts the snake, or kalpana of the aspect of fraction. Like, uh, even Nanduki Upanishad also talks about that. Asatma chatushpad. Sarahani yetu brahma, ayam atma brahma, soma atma chatushpad. This atma is four quarters. But also the kalpana alone, for what? In order to convey the nature of atma. Because we think that there are four atmas. There is a waker, there is a dreamer, there is a deep sleeper, I think that all of them are different from one another. And so, just this teacher says, soma atma chatushpad, that atma, that this three are not only there, there is a fourth also. In course of time when teacher shows how the three are not real and fourth alone is real and fourth alone is this three and there is one alone ultimately. But for that the starting point is Atma has as though four quarters. Mm-hmm. And so this Amsha Amshi Bhava is first imagined that Brahman is Amshi and the whole creation is Amsha. That is accepted for a moment then to show that 
and the creation is mitya, the amsha amshi bhava also is mitya. <coughs> so niramsha yabi amsham aropya. This amsha is, this amsha means the idea of the fractionality is superimposed upon Brahman, which is niramsham, which is free from, parts or free from any amsha. <coughs> Okay, that part is subtle. What is subtle? Whether Maya is in is Brahman throughout or in one fraction of Brahman? Well, you can say Maya is in one fraction of Brahman except that, but Amsha Amshi Bhava also is, is as Mitya as Maya is, that's all. Yadartham Brahmani Maya Samarthita Tad Iranimaha Now the Maya has been explained, it has been established, or proven there is something, something called Maya. And what is the characteristic of Maya? Also has been said. What is the relation with Brahman? That also has been said. What for the world has been said? Whether are some the purpose for which Brahmani Maya Samatida. That there is Maya in Brahman. That there is so called creative power of Brahman, that Samatita. The purpose for which this has all been uh, expounded here. That Ivani Maha. Now in verse 59, the reason for expounding. You know, this whole principle of Maya is being stated in verse 59. Sattattva Mahashrita Shakti Kalpayet Sati Vikriya Varana Bhitti Gata Bhitta Chitram Nana Vidham Yatha Sattattvam Ashita Shaktihi Sati Vikriyaha Kalpayed This Shaktihi, Shakti means this Maya, this power Sattattvam Ashita Vitae Asaya or it's as it's about where in Sattattvam what is Sattattvam? Sat Brahman. Brahman in which this Maya has the Ashraya. Maya has the Sabod or this Tanaman Brahman. Sa Sati Vikriyaha Kalpayed. Interesting thing is the Maya has derived its reality from Maya, derived its existence from Brahman. It depends totally upon Brahman and creates all confusion about Brahman. So this is the Ashraya and Vishaya of Maya is one alone. What is Ashraya of Maya? Brahman. And what is it that the Maya conceives? Also Brahman. So even though Maya has its origin in Brahman, that very origin also is confounded or concealed by Maya. Let's see, that, that's the, the, you know, wonder about the thing. In Viveka Chodami, the illustration is given about the clouds. So clouds have origin in what? In sun. It is sun which in fact evaporates the water from the ocean. It's sun alone which in fact creates a current of wind also by creating a pressure difference etc. And that is how those clouds in fact come to a given place and then the rain. Those very same clouds, they conceal the sun. The clouds which have the origin in sun conceal the very sun. And so also this Maya or ignorance which has its origin in Brahman conceals the very Brahman and creates misconception about the very Brahman. So you have that, where you get your, your, uh, your bread, you know, that very same thing in fact you are concealing as well as creating all kinds of misconceptions about. So it is said, Sattvam Sattattvam Ashita Shakti, this Maya Shakti which is this Ashra in Sattattva, Sati Vikriyaha Kalpaya Vikriyaha Vibhatya Kriyanda Vikriyaha Kadu Visheshaha Ityasaha. Maya is one, its effects are many. Because Maya consists of three components, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. And therefore a permutation and combination of the Sattva, Rajas, Tamas gives rise to a whole panorama of different effects. And thus, everything is a composition of, everything is a mixture of sattva rajas tamas, but as the proportion varies, you have all this variety of objects in the creation. So, vivida, vikriyaha means what? 
ಟಿಪ್ಪಣಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ On this various permutation combination of Sattva Rajasthamas, you have a whole variety of effects there. <coughs> okay, how does this Kalpana come about? Kalpana is to make appearance of something which is not really there. That's called Kalpana. Snake is called Kalpana, appearance of something which is not really there. So what is the, what is the nature of this Kalpana? For that also an illustration is given in the second line. You can see in this text here, how many drishtanga illustrations are given that is style of teaching because illustration gives us a certain idea gives you an insight into the thing illustration never equals what is illustrated but still serves the purpose or helps us getting an insight into the thing it says varnaha bhitti gataha bhitti means the wall varnaha means colors bhitti gataha varnaha this varana of the colors when you paint a wall then these various colors which are there this colors abide where they have that ashra or above where that very wall isn't it when you paint a wall where are these colors located in the wall itself and what do they do they just create different paint pictures on the wall they make the wall appear to be different from what it is even though they have their very abode in the wall and then still they make the wall appear to be quite different from what it is so is varanaha bhitti gataha varanam sarakta pitaada dhatu visheshaha the new the dewi color is dhatu because different metals are different colors you know copper has one color iron has another color so dhatu all the substances so red yellow etc all these different colors bhitti gataha which have their abode in bhitti means a wall bhittau chitram nanavidam yatha kalpade in these very colors which derive their origin or with, from wall or which have their support in the wall they create a kalpana of different kinds of pictures in the wall nanavidam chitram yatha kalpade nanavidam of various kinds chitram is a picture or so how this work work colors create appearance of different kinds of pictures on the wall what is the picture nothing but play of colors what is the picture a play of colors what the colors are able to do create the idea of picture where in fact there is a wall you may not even know that there is a wall you may think there is a lion here there is an elephant there if it is so painted you may think there is an elephant the very colors which have which have the support in the wall make the wall appear to be something quite different from what it is it can create an appearance of a king of a court of a garden of a mountain of anything and so also this maya which has its being in brahman makes brahman appear to be different from what it is meaning it creates an appearance of this whole world and that's what maya does so maya is the creative power so he wants to now explain the creation for that purpose the whole concept of maya has been introduced the very definition of maya has been given and what is the relationship of maya with brahman all of this is given now to do the viveka so is pratigna is what pancha bhuta viveka and that viveka now he starts here from this verse <coughs> tatra prathamam karya vishesham darshayati prathamam karya vishesham darshayati karya vishesha specific effect prathamam is the very first so what is the first effect now that is being shown in the next verse 
आद्यो विकार आकाश है सोवकाश स्वरूप आकाशोस्ती सत्व आकाशेनुगछते इंटरेस्टिंग आद्यो विकार आकाश है तस्मात्मन आकाश संभूत आद्यो विकार है सो आदो भव आद्य है दट इज ओटेन फर्स्ट इसको आद्य है आद्यो विकार है वेरी फर्स्ट विकार है वेरी फर्स्ट मॉडिफिकेशन बिकॉज इन ऑल एक्सप्लेन द क्रिएशन ब्रह्मन इट सेल्फ इज नॉट इनफ Brahman does not undergo any change where we find the creation which is constantly undergoing the change. Therefore, it is necessary also to introduce this concept of Maya, which can explain the various changes taking place. So, Maya is what we call the Parinami Upadana Karanam, the material cause that undergoes change. Brahman is what we call the Vartu Upadana Karanam, Avishthana Karanam, Avishthanam, or that Karanam which material cause. Which does not undergo any change. Vivartam is what Vipari the Vartanam. So, uh, behavior, there is something contrary to its nature. So, Brahman, without undergoing a change, becomes a material cause. But we do find the change. And so, to explain that is this concept of Maya, which is the Parinami Upadana Karanam. And that is the, the material cause that undergoes a real change in order to become the effect. <coughs> So, Vikara, Adyo Vikara, the first modification of what? Of Maya. Brahman cannot have modification. First modification is, is of Maya is Akasha, hai. the first element. And what's the nature of Akasha? Tat Sarupa, Sovakasha, Sarupa. What is Sarupa, the nature of Akasha? Avakasha, hai. or Avakasha Pradatru Akasham. That which accommodates is called Akasha. So, avakasha swarubhavan, the very nature of avakasha is avakasha accommodation. Akasha astiti, akasha se brahma karyatva hetumaha. How do you say that akasha is effect of brahman? You can say modification of brahman in a way, that modification being projected. But how do you say that akasha is created from brahman? Do you have some kind of an evidence? Yes. How do you say that this ornament is a gold ornament? When you find that ornament, the qualities of gold. And so we can infer the nature of the cause from the nature of the effect. Because the characteristics or attributes of the cause always follow or flow into the effect. And so if you say that Akasha, the space is the effect or the modification of Brahman, how do you say that? Because Akasha Astiti. What do we say? Space is. It is Tat Tattvam Akashevi Anugachadi. Karana Tattvam Karya Anugachadi. The nature of the cause always follows or is reflected in the effect. In Akasha, the space also, what do we say? Space is Akasha Hasti. Meaning the space enjoys this, the, the nature of being existent. And so, Sat Tattvam Akasha Bhi Anugachati. And that's why we say, because Akasha is, and therefore existence is there in and through the Akasha. That's Asti. Akasha Asti. Of course, we can say Akasha Bhati. But here the Viveka is run between Sat and Jagat. So, of course, that also applies to Chit. But then here, Sat being the whole subject matter or the point of focus of discussion, Therefore, he only points our attention to one thing, Akasha Hasti, space is. Means that the space enjoys the quality of being existent. Space enjoys the quality of accommodation. That this nature, as well as space, enjoys this quality of being existent. Space has therefore two aspects. What? Accommodation as well as existence. <coughs> That's what I say in the next one. <coughs> Tatah kim when you say this, that space is Tatah kim, so what? Ityadaha, that is the question, Ahad, and the answer is in verse 61. 
एकस्वभाव सत्तत्व एक स्वभाव में शुरू हो गए अनुस्वार शुरू में दे एक स्वभाव सत्तत्व आकाशोद्रिस्वभाव कह नवकाश सतव्योनी आकाश दुस्वभाव आकाश हैजुस्वभाव वे तू स्वभाव आकाश इज वन स्वभाव इज वॉट अवकाश एकोमोडेशन इज अदर स्वभाव आकाश आकाश अस्ति सो आकाश इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय एकोमोडेशन एज वेल एज एक्सिस्टेंस वेर इज आकाश इज नॉट इन ब्रह्मन एक स्वभाव सत्तत्व से इज हियर वन अवकाश सती व्योनी सती अवकाश सती न इन सत अब्रह्मन अवकाश और एकोमोडेशन इज नॉट मीन दी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ आकाश और धर्म ऑफ द आकाश इज नॉट फाउंड इन सत वेर इज धर्म ऑफ सत इज फाउंड इन इन आकाश फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टू डिटर्मिन यू नो द रिलेशनशिप प्रिम कॉज इन इफेक्ट ही इज गोल्ड अदर इज ऑर्नामेंट ऑर्नामेंट इज टू आस्पेक्ट वेर इज आस्पेक्ट द नेम इन फॉर्म इज वन आस्पेक्ट and second is what gold ornament is goldness also as well as name in form also there is gold is how many aspects one alone it is only goldness and not name in form that shows that gold is the cause and the ornament is effect effect always has more aspects than the cause so also akash has two aspects sat as well as avakasham where sat only has aspect sat it is under avakash अवकाश सती आकाशे तो सच सत्स्वभाव अवकाश स्वभाव स्थित विद्यते इन व्योमी नवकाश अंदर हेन्ड सच सच मीन स्वाड अवकाश एंड एष मीन सच मीन सत्स्वभाव एंड एष इज अवकाश आकाश टू सत्स्वभावेस्टूथोल्ड <coughs> पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात्पूर्णमुदच्यत पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यत ओम शान्ति 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 शंकरं शंकराचार्यं केशवं बादरायणं सूत्रभाष्यकृतौ वन्दे भगवन्त पुनः पुनः ईश्वर गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणमूर्त नम ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम